There are a couple reasons why people back up their files. One is that if something happened to their computer, like it got damaged or it was stolen or the hard drive crashed, then you have a copy of it. Well, not a copy of it on your computer because if it was stolen, well, the copy went with it. So you want to back it up either to a bunch of DVDs, depending on how many files you want to back up, how large those files are, or to an external hard drive that connects to the computer through a USB cable. As I have attached to my computer, for example, if I double click open up any folder over in the navigation pane, there's the computer, click on it, and it reveals the main hard drive and all the other external hard drives attached to the computer through a USB cable down below. I have one tetrabyte hard drive, another tetrabyte, and then I have a 149 gigabyte and then a 500 gigabyte. All four of these are external hard drives that I can back up my files on my computer here to one of these four. Of course, if I'm backing up really large files and a lot of them, it may not be enough to jam it all here on a 149 gigabyte hard drive. So we'll have to work at this accordingly. Now, one other reason why people might want to be able to back up their files is that, let me close out of here. When I open up the exercises folder on the desktop, I've got a lot of files in here. If I accidentally delete one, but I have it backed up, I can restore that file. Or if I made changes to a file and I'm like, gosh, I can't remember the original and I want the original, not all these changes that I just made, then you can also, if you backed it up, restore that file as well. Now there's a couple ways you can back up your files. You can either do it by hand, meaning that, you know, over here when I click on the computer, it shows me a list of all the external hard drives. I can just go ahead and move this out of the way and then open up this folder, move that over here and then click and drag onto my external hard drives and back it up, which you would have to do on a daily basis here, which you'd have to keep tight management on that or even easier, let me close out of here. As far as opening up two windows, you can turn that down and then there's the hard drives, just click and drag to the hard drives there. So that's one way. The other way is to use the Windows Backup feature on Windows 7 here and that can be found by coming down here and clicking on the start button, going to the control panel, and then up here click on backup your computer. If this is your first time in the backup center and it's the first time you're backing up, you should have a link here that says set up backup, go ahead and click on it. Of course I already have mine set up so if I want to make any changes to it, and of course once you set yours up and you want to make changes to it, come down here and click on change settings. Give it a few seconds while it detects all the devices that it can back up the files to from your computer, like a secondary internal hard drive, which I don't recommend. I mean, if somebody steals a computer, then they got your second internal hard drive. In any case, you have the DVD or Blu-ray drive. If you stick that in before you go ahead and click on Setup Backup, you should have the amount of free space on that DVD or Blu-ray disc. And then down below, the other four external hard drives that are connected to my computer through the USB cable. Gives you the amount of free space again, the total size. And I just want to back up my exercises folder on the desktop. And you can see, as you recall, I don't have many files in there. So I'm going to go ahead and select the 500 gigabyte hard drive. I think it can handle those files. I mean, the free space is 370 gigabytes. Select it, click Next. And then you get two choices. Do you want to go ahead and let Windows choose what's going to be backed up? or do you want to choose yourself? If you select Windows, it tells you that it will take those files that are saved in the libraries on the desktop and in the default Windows folders and back those up. It also create a system image, which is good because it can be used to restore your computer if it stops working. So if I come up here and I select that and click Next, that's what it's going to be backing up, including all the users on this computer. And as you recall, I have three users. I have Training, Dreamforce, and Kershaw's. And then there's the system image. So if it really has an issue, it can go ahead and restore the system files in case if those got corrupted. And then down here, go ahead and click on change schedule because what's really cool is that you can go ahead and automate this and have it run a backup on a schedule if you go ahead and check it. Weekly, daily, monthly, go ahead and choose weekly. Maybe on a, nobody comes in for work on Saturdays. And I can go ahead and set that up early in the morning and then click OK and it says every Saturday at 6 a.m. Now what that means is that after we create our first backup, we click Save Settings and Run Backup, then Windows Backup will add new or changed information to your subsequent backups. So for example, if we go ahead and we back up everything on the computer and we make one change to one file, it's not going to go ahead and go through all that backup again and shovel everything over to the uh, external device to back it up. 
it's going to say out of everything that was backed up previously, I saw one little file that was changed, so I'll go ahead and back that up. And you know how it notices those changes? Well, I'll show you one way in just a second, but when you're done, go ahead and click on Save Settings and Run Backup. I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel, but when you click on Save Settings and Run Backup, I'll show you. Let me go back to Change Settings. Only this time, let me select the 500 gigabyte and click Next. I want to choose. Click Next. And then you get the option of choosing data files by checking them here for the Dreamforce libraries, anything that I saved in there. Of course, I can turn it down and be more specific, just the documents, music. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back up and uncheck it. Or I can get more particular and just say, again, I want the exercises folder on my desktop to be backed up. So I have to scroll down through here. We're going to the C drive. And then down to the C drive, of course we have the users on this computer, three of them. We have Dreamforce, we have Kershaw's, and we have Training. I'm logged in as Training. I'm going to turn it down. And then on the desktop of the Training user, turn that down. There's the Exercises folder. Turn that down, and inside that folder we have Fonts. Let me go ahead and check this, and notice that it selects and includes the subfolder as the backup. Check that, and then down below, I can also include a system image of the drives. And again, it explains what a system image is. It's a copy of the drives required for Windows to run. So if something happens and damages those drives also, then it's good to have those files that were backed up during the time that it was running correctly to be restored. In any case, I won't check it because it's going to take up more time here. And I just want to back up my exercises. Click Next. I can go ahead and set it on a schedule. Click Change, same thing, check it, and say, look, I want it to back up this folder weekly, Saturday mornings at 6 a.m., and click OK. That way, once it does the initial backup, as I mentioned, any subsequent backups, it'll just go ahead and back up only those files that have been changed. So if I didn't touch the file all week, when it comes to Saturday and it runs its backup, it won't back up those files. doesn't make sense, because if you didn't touch them, nothing's changed, why back them up? We already have a backup of them. Go ahead and click on Save Settings, and Run Backup, and then let it do its thing. Depending upon the, uh, let me come up here and double click on the header bar to maximize it so you can kind of see what's going on. If it was a large backup, you may want to go ahead and take a break. So when I'm done here, let me go ahead and close out. If I go to my backup drive, remember it was the 500 gigabyte, the external connected through the USB cable. Double click Open Up Any Folder. There it is, 500 gigabyte. Click on it. Over in here, that hold folder was there before. So what you're going to see is you're going to see the name of the computer, which is me, Dreamforce, not the username. The login username is training, but this is Dreamforce for the computer. And then another um, file that also helps in the restoration here if I need to restore my backup. So let me go ahead and close out. Open up the exercises again. And let's say I made a mistake and I, well, let me open up Promotions. And let's delete the S for Whale. Close out, save it, and let's go ahead and delete the Smile. So we got a theme going. We deleted the S out of Promotions and we got rid of the Smile image. So if I made some mistakes in this folder and I want to go ahead and restore what I just backed up, then you want to watch the next training video. But as I promised, earlier on when I mentioned that how does Windows know when something's changed in a file, well, if you go ahead and you right-click on a file and go down to Properties, notice that it has a timestamp when the file was created, when it was modified, and it was modified a minute ago. So when I did the backup, it had the timestamp. So if I open up this file and modify it between now and when it runs the next backup, then it goes, okay, something's changed, okay? And then it knows that it needs to back up this file. If nothing's changed, then it's not going to waste time and back up the file that it already has a copy of. That again, no changes were made. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for all my training, please visit me at my website, dreamforce.us.